I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today I want to touch on whether or not you should be, or maybe when you should be, buying a house here in Nicaragua. I know, we go through a lot of talk about why you need to rent, avoid buying a house, and why buying a house is not an investment, and that's all completely correct. But it's easy to take that too far as well, and think that maybe you should never buy a house. We're going to talk about why a house might be something that should be in your future, or maybe not, on today's episode. We're going to get to that right after the bump. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know that I talk non-stop about the importance of renting, getting to know the country, spending lots of time, and not rushing into anything, especially not rushing into home buying, rushing into coming down to Nicaragua and spending some time. That's, yeah, do that. Rush right into it. Go buy your ticket today. Obviously, get right on that. The sooner you come down and learn about the country, the sooner you'll be in a position to make really good decisions about everything you do. So, fantastic get right on that. But when it comes to homes, most people have a tendency, or an awful lot of people at the very least, have a tendency towards leaping straight from I'm interested in a place to I'm immediately looking to buy in a place that I really haven't spent much time and get to know very well. In normal life, we don't do this. You grow up in a neighborhood and you get to know your town, your county, even your state. You get to know a wide area. You know a lot about it. You have a lot of details and you're able to make really good decisions, even about places that are relatively far away. If you grew up in Dallas, it would be easy for you to buy in Houston. If you grew up in Buffalo, New York, it would be easy for you to buy even as far as Milwaukee without having to do any significant additional research other than driving around a little bit. You could make at least a pretty reasonable decision even though you wouldn't have all of the possible information. You'd be pretty good. But when you start to go to other countries and especially other countries with completely different legal systems and uh, lifestyles and different parts of the world, different languages, cultural regions, all that information that you start to assume you know when you're dealing with your own country, say New York to Wisconsin, starts to fall away. And you start taking on an awful lot of risk that it's extremely rare that you would have a really good idea about towns, departmentos, and even just parts of the country or weather. So it's important to spend time, get to know what you like, how things work, be prepared on, on how to just do all the mechanics and to build up the resources you need. When I live in the United States, my lawyer can handle anything I need anywhere in the country. I don't have to worry about finding a new lawyer, a new accountant, a new whatever every place that I go. But when you go to a new country, generally you have to find new of everything. So you're building your ecosystem up from scratch. So all those things take time and all those things encourage you to get down to wherever it is you're going to go and start building up those resources, but to then take time on deciding to build or buy a house until you really have all those parts uh, put together, your ecosystem is built up, and your knowledge of the market is significant enough that you're able to make good decisions. So we encourage people to pull back from the emotional response of buying a house as a knee-jerk reaction for two reasons. One, you, you have a tradition of thinking you know more about what you want in a house than you reasonably do in a new country. And two, there is a strong push from the banks and other uh, money makers like, like real estate agents uh, to make it seem like houses are generally a good investment and you should get into a house as quickly as possible because renting is just paying someone else's mortgage. This is completely untrue and it's, it's deceitful. Anyone who tells you that houses are a good investment, you should get right into it, you should cut them out of your life. And I mean that. That is a reckless, dangerous, unethical statement to make. Anyone who knows anything about finances can easily tell you that houses as an average, as a general rule, are not a good or a bad investment. They're about a middle of the road investment and they're not truly an investment. It's not quite what they are, but you can think of them that way and we'll use the term and that's fine. But anybody who's trying to trick you into thinking that just buying houses for the sake of buying houses is, is just good in general, is deceiving you because either they know they know nothing about the market and they're just making things up, or they know that they're saying something absolutely dishonest. So I truly mean this and I've, I have cut business partners completely out of my life and canceled our work that we did for them 
partially based on them saying things like this because they were using their platform to try to trick people so they could sell them real estate services, of course. And they were willing to say things that were absolutely, and they knew, completely untrue. During boosts in the market, right? We recently had a bubble in the United States. You had tons and tons of people telling you how real estate could not be a bad investment. Everybody makes money in real estate. Well, if it's an investment, you know for a fact that most people are not going to make money. At best, half make money and half lose. That's how investments work. You're making your money off the loss of someone else, except for in a case where you're creating new products, then the market can actually grow. But houses don't work that way. They're a steady state. So for everyone who earns money in the real estate market, someone is losing in the real estate market. So the idea that it's always good is fundamentally, conceptually, always has to be a lie. It is at best a break even overall. If you have a situation where the government taxes you or there are any costs involved with transferring houses or property, then the average has to be a loss because you have an average winning and losing overall balance between the buyers and sellers minus the overhead. So for example, in the United States, there's taxes on the transfer of a home. Therefore, the average person in buying or selling a house loses money. You can't just transfer all day and have a break even. You will eventually drive all the money to zero. So it's a losing game overall. But everybody who has anything to do with real estate makes money from the process all on you losing on average. So they all have a really good incentive to try to trick you. So watch out for that. But all of that is to say these are the reasons that we caution people really strongly about jumping into houses. Everybody who talks to you about real estate is out to sell you something. So you have to be careful, but it creates an emotional drive that we, we actually make a situation in many countries that we want to belittle you and make you feel like you're not successful if you don't own a house. And there's some processes that like really lean on that, right? There's some government stuff that's like, well, if you own a house, you get some special benefits. Like it's really weird how we do that. But because the government makes money on you buying a house, the banks make money and the banks pay for the law of the government. Well, they're encouraged to push for you to do things that are reckless for you. They're not out to protect you. So we warn people a lot. Now, all that said, does that actually mean you never want to buy a house? Actually, no. no. School NYC made the comment on the video that, you know, really you should never buy a house. It's crazy. Renting is better. That's not entirely true. It's true the majority of the time. For the average person, renting is better than buying a house. So it's a good starting point. But you don't want to take it as a complete and utter truth that you never want to buy a house. That is absolutely not true. There's great reasons to want to buy a house. And here in Nicaragua, there may be even better reasons why you want to buy a house. There's just all these problems that make it more difficult than it would be in your home country for you, at least at the start. So once you get over those things, once you've gotten to know the market, once you know you really want to live in a certain town, certain departmento, and are ready to look for an actual house, Nicaragua might be the best place that you have to buy one. So is buying here in Nicaragua actually sensible for a house? Well, Actually, yes. I think in most cases, of course, this is an incredibly personal thing, so it depends totally on you. But if you know that you definitely want to have a long-term life here in Nicaragua, you definitely know the right location that you want to be at, you really have made those decisions in a really good, healthy way, then I think buying in Nicaragua may be one of the best places that you could consider buying. So, Let's talk about that. So Nicaragua has a couple things going for it just in general, like they have really good property laws and buying a house is not that hard. Overall, the cost of homes here is not that high. So the risk comes down some just because it's less expensive. However, that also brings down the value of or the cost of renting. So that moves together. They don't move independently. So even though your risk might be lower, well, yes, but your ability to rent is also improved. So that alone is only misleading. That triggers an emotional, well, I can buy a house. You still should make good decisions. But what's important, is right now the market here in Nicaragua is highly depressed. The real estate market, we have some videos on this. You can go look that up. I'll try to link them at the end of the video. But the market here is extremely low. We're still on roughly the lowest of a 200 year uh, real estate market here in the country. The, the country is just over uh, 200 years old, uh, having been founded in 1821. So we're at 203 years. Uh, and during that time, we've never had such a low cost to buy existing structures and or property. Of course, 
property only represents a small, the land, a lot that you would be building on only represents a small percentage of an overall house. And you can make your own estimates, whether it's five or 20%, depending on where you are and what you're doing. But in general, the lot size is a relatively small percentage. 20% maybe isn't that small, but so if you're beachfront, you pay much more percentage for your lot. And if you're buying in the middle of the country in a small village or whatever, then your lot tends to fall to nearly nothing in in the scope of your overall house it just depends where you are and when i lived in romania lots got so cheap then when we said we were interested in building a house they said well we just give you a lot in the village as long as you're going to build a house and live here the, the land is free like you want a field that's different you want a bunch of space you want an orchard yeah you're gonna pay a little bit for that just to build a house no 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 that's free just build the house because the property here in Nicaragua is at an all-time low, this means you have a lot of protections. You have a protection that it's very hard to buy a house and have that value of the house decrease over time. Of course, it's always possible, but the chances of it get really slim. Once a house hits a certain level, there's just no reasonable way for it to get cheaper. Or if it does get cheaper, it's by tiny percentage points. You're not taking on a ton of risk. If you're planning on holding on to a house for a long time, which is the only conditions under which you should be buying one, unless you're like a house flipper and you're buying it simply for the opportunity to build or construct or, you know, upgrade and then flip again, which would be foolish in this market, but you could do it. You should be buying a house with the plan to hold on to it for a number of years, generally greater than 10 years. And if you do that here, the safety that the market will increase, maybe not dramatically, but will increase during that time, not just match inflation, but beat inflation is extremely high. It would be groundbreaking for a country to hold on to a low property value for that amount of time. It's already held a few years. To have another decade at absolute lows would be unprecedented. But even if it did, you'd still be looking at property values just the same as today, having ridden inflation. So they'd still be higher numerically, but they'd just be equivalent to what you paid today. That would mean that you lived in the house rent-free during that time. So you have a lot of protections. This is different than, say, the U.S. market, where there's lots of room for it to grow, but lots of room for it to collapse as well. That means you're taking a risk. You could go 10, 20 years and find yourself in a house that's worth less than when you bought it, even when adjusted for inflation. That may not happen. may not happen most of the time, but it is a risk here in Nicaragua. For all intents and purposes, that's not a risk. Your biggest risk is under the current situation, there are more houses available than there are buyers, and that means that houses potentially sit on the market for an extremely long time, potentially decades. So if you have a house and you think there's going to be a situation where you may need to sell it, that's when you need to be super careful because the opportunity to not have the any chance to sell a house that's kind of the opposite way to say it. There's a real possibility there will be no opportunity to sell your house for a very long time. That's where it becomes risky. Even if it's not a ton of money that put it, you're putting in, let's say you get a really inexpensive house, you invest $50,000 US and you have a house here, which is not, not the cheapest, but not a bad price for a house. Definitely, that's not likely to be beachfront, right? That's gonna be a very conservative house somewhere in the middle of the country, but you do that. You have this $50,000 house. You hold on to it for a while. If you can't sell it, if you need that $50,000 to live on, that could become a problem for you. But for most people coming from the United States, yes, that would be incredibly inconvenient to be to have $50,000 tied up, but at least it's not losing value. You can pass it on or hold on to it for long enough until someone's willing to buy it. And if you're willing to drop the price just a little bit, 46, 48, you're probably going to sell it within a few years and free up that money. But that's incredibly unlikely unless you have to sell it in the very short term there's very little chance that the growing population and the future of the country and the incredible economic growth and, and increase of the middle class is not going to start overtaking the, the uh, current market and start uh, house purchasing again. That is coming. Like We don't know exactly when, but we see factors that seem to indicate that will come in the near-ish future, five to ten years. Once you hit that, chances are not only are your houses going to be easy to sell, but they're going to have increased in value. Maybe not exploded in value, right? We're not, we're not expecting 100% increases, 200% increases, but 10, 20, even 30 or 40% increases in house values over the next decade are completely reasonable and far more likely than staying steady. So yes, 
it's risky and you want to be really careful when buying a house. It is a massive decision and as long as you want to stay mobile, buying a house is incredibly foolish. But once you know you're going to be stable or once you have a really high degree of confidence and you have the financial capability to withstand the potential need to hold on to a house for a long time, knowing that selling a house, reselling a house could be almost guaranteed is going to be very, very difficult for a long time. As long as you're good with those things, as those decisions, people who are retiring are often in the best position for this. They know they're going to ride it out. They're going to stay in that house. If it's not perfect, they're still going to stay. If it can sell, they get a good price. Well, maybe they'll make some choices, but they're willing to hold on to it. They don't have to move because of a job change or something like that. That's the best time uh, to be buying. You have the most uh, stability. Or if you just have enough money that you're like, I don't want to throw a lot of money at a house, but I can buy a house in Nicaragua. It makes great financial sense. I have really good stability and I'm willing to take the risk that I have to hold on to it under extreme circumstances where both I was wrong about my long-term needing to keep this house and I can't rent it in any way to offset the cost and no one will buy it at a reasonable price that I'm willing to sell it at. Under those really unlikely conditions, if you've done your job right, then you, and you're like, and it's an okay risk to take, then great, then buying a house could be perfect for you. So for an awful lot of people who do their due diligence, I think buying a house in Nicaragua is an absolutely excellent opportunity. I don't like to say it's an investment, but it essentially is. You're investing in uh, the it, watching a market that is that is coming up and has basically nowhere to go down from as long as you're get, not getting gringo price. If you get gringo price, all bets are off. But as long as you're paying fair market value for the houses, and I know how hard that is, right? Like it's hard to know, it's hard to do, it's hard to figure out. So accept all that, but get a good price, ride the market, use it as your home for a long time. And under those conditions, I think you're going to struggle to find any place in the world where buying a house isn't as low risk and valuable as doing so in Nicaragua. There's going to be places where you happen to get lucky and have thousand percent increases in land value in really isolated places. And you can't really predict those where they wouldn't have those things. The prices would already be higher. But for an area that has a large, predictable, almost guaranteed, slow and steady increase over the coming decade, Nicaragua is one of the best you will ever encounter. This is the time to start getting in, start making decisions, start determining if you can be stable enough that buying a house anywhere would make sense. And if Nicaragua is the place that makes sense for you, then jumping in and actually buying a house with your eyes wide open, good due diligence having been done, taking your time, using patience, you can find that a home here could be an amazing opportunity for you to, to get a good use of your money and have the pleasure of owning a place and getting to customize and, and do any changes you want anytime you want. That's a lot of value. That's really important. So I, I, I do actually think that buying houses for a lot of people will make sense in Nicaragua. I just don't want people rushing into it and feeling that, as people will say, oh, so houses are going fast. No, they're not. Oh, the, the market's coming up. No, it's not. Is it going to? Yes. Will they sell fast in the future? Maybe. Is it now? Absolutely not. That is not the world we're in. Every agent's going to tell you that that is true, and every person who lives here will be like, what are they talking about? Nothing's selling. No one's moving in. We're still under these conditions. It is not doing that. You have so much opportunity right now to still have patience, take your time, and do it right. There is no rush at all except to start the process. That is the one thing. Don't procrastinate because then there will be pressure at some point in the future. You, it's, and this is normal. This is why there's a great opportunity because normal people won't be proactive. They wait until everyone else is buying houses and then they say, oh, everyone else is doing it. I got to do it too. And that is always how you get screwed in the market. That is how you overpay. That is how you don't have the options, the flexibility, the time to make good decisions and you end up in bad positions. And, and the average person loses so much when doing that because even if they get a good financial deal or an average financial deal, they don't get the right spot. They don't get the customization. They don't get the choices. They don't get the comfort of taking their time and making good decisions because they are under pressure and they just have to do something as quickly as something is available. You have right now an opportunity to do things well. Don't waste it. Do the rental thing. Come to Nicaragua. Start the process. Take your time, but you can only take your time if you start immediately. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel and help, you know, provide this information to people, which I think is super valuable. I hope you find it valuable. 
You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. That comes directly to me. It's like Patreon and makes this channel possible. I have a lot of expenses like the microphone and camera that I'm talking on. It looks beautiful today, right? This is the Fuji. I'm doing a bunch of these really quickly. I'm going to announce in tomorrow's show why I'm disappearing uh, for the weekend. But while you're watching this episode, you should be seeing it while I am in Guatemala. Uh, for interesting reasons, I can't divulge too much about the trip, but I am on a trip, I hope. The tickets were already bought, so by the time this posts, I am in flight, uh, hopefully on a tiny Cessna, which I really hope I'm going to get to record. I get to record on this particular trip, at least partially. So some cool stuff, but I'm not going to tell you anything about it till tomorrow, so stay tuned. Like and subscribe, post on social media, tell someone about the show, share with everyone, like, hey, important house buying stuff, not just Nicaragua, but anywhere. Some of it's specific, but a lot of it's just general ways you need to know about buying houses. But don't, don't, don't let emotional reactions take you either way. Don't let emotional reactions keep you from renting, because renting is the right thing for most people most of the time. But don't let that fact that most people most of the time keep you from ever owning because maybe that's the right thing for you. And when it's right, then that's, you just have to evaluate and make good decisions logically, rationally. I will see all of you tomorrow. And if we're lucky, four videos popped up on the screen. Just click on one of those or any of my other videos to tell the algorithm that this is the show that it needs to promote.